How you doing? We are ready to go. We got in one minute to the next program. If you are tuning in live and you hear my voice, we have the next program coming up. We got really three great programs to finish out the day. Chris Hirschman in video, a cinematographer. Amy Vitali is going to come back up to the stage talking about reframing the narrative. And we've got Kaya Marie Stone, a wedding and portrait photographer, to close out our day, who shoots these beautiful, clean, lovely images. So we got a nice, nice lineup to, to finish out the rest of the day. And we're going live again in five seconds. This is such great fun broadcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in and around the booth, if you've got a seat, great. If you're here, come up. We've got another program to inspire you. Only we're shifting gears from still to cinematic or cinematography. And we have an amazing, not only musician, but cinematographer, director, filmmaker with us here today. So let me introduce to the Nikon stage Mr. Chris Hirschman, and he's going to talk to you about the art of making music videos. Chris Hirschman, Nikon ambassador. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How's it going, guys? What's happening? So I'm Chris. I'm from Chicago. And um, I'm a filmmaker. Chicago? Yeah, yeah man. Um, it's been great to me. I, I grew up as a musician playing music, and I was also a photographer. And I started getting into photography um, a, little, a little heavier. And I was like, you know what? I can't work at this music store anymore. I want to start a career in photography. And then that's when I picked up my first camera body that had video, which was the Nikon D300S. This is years ago. And I just tested the camera out to see what the video capabilities of this camera look like. And I asked my buddy's band, hey, can I, can I shoot a music video of you guys playing live? And they were like, sure, come along. So I made my first music video just testing out the capabilities, and I fell in love. It looked so professional. I had never been able to pull off something so high quality looking and cinematic, right? So my, com my speech is about cinema and how to make great looking videos that have mood, vibe, and technique. And I'm going to show you um, kind of a, a whole slew of what I've been doing lately. But I'm going to focus on the, the D850 and the Z7. So again, going back to the conversation, I, I, just, I, I tested out the video features. And I had no idea that that would lead to a full long career in creating music content for or video content for the music industry, and that's what I do. So uh, I'm going to jump right into showing you some of the work. Um, the D850 came out sometime last year, and this was like one of my favorite tools that Nikon had came out with because it was 4K. It was finally 4K video, and I'm going to show you what we've been doing on the Z7, which is very incredible as far as uh, techniques that we can do different because of the advanced technology in the camera, but. I wanted to show you kind of um, one of my more recent works that um, is, is my flavor. This is my vibe. This is the type of video work that I like to pull off. So let me go ahead and pl play this music video. It's called Company of Thieves. That's the band. And the song is Treasure. We filmed this in Chicago. And uh, this, is, this is one of my favorite videos we've ever made. So here we go. Let's check it out.
Yeah. So that's what we did with the Nikon D850. Um, I think that's pretty impressive for DSLR cinema. The fun fact about this, there's a few things, is that we shot it uh, completely um, to uh, card, and we did no color correction. So all of those bright colors, every transition, there's no special effects. Everything is practical effects, which means that we, we create the look in the camera in front of the lens. Me, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get from project to project. I don't have enough time or attention to sit and post editing for a long time. And I also don't, I, I'm not always working, when you're working with bands, you don't always have massive budgets, right? So you're trying to create the best quality thing you can on the best time frame that you can. So my approach was like, I'm just gonna make everything fun. We're gonna challenge ourselves to get the, the look right in the camera. And that's one of my favorite, favorite music videos that we shot. I have um, a video, uh, that we shot on the Z7 that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. I'm going to give you some previews so you can see what we did, and then I'm going to tell you how we use the camera, and then you'll see how we applied that on, in the, on an actual shoot, and I'll take you behind the scenes of the shoot. Also, the video we just watched, this is the biggest screen I've ever seen it on. That's incredible. Um, but you can go to Nikon's website, and we created an hour-long class on how to use the D850 to make music videos, and we used that music video as our lesson. So if you want to know exactly how we do it, you can go to Nikon's website and check that class out. But this is it. This is the new Nikon Z7. The Z6 is here as well, which you should check out, which is going to be an amazing video camera. But I brought along my rig, and I just wanted to let people know how I use this in the field, which is basically every day. Some of the things that used to limit um, maybe the, the amount of time that you could record on DSLRs I've tried to do my best to eliminate that, and you know, having it uh, mobile and having it uh, record longer times without having to be limited to 30-minute time frame. So I have a, a digital recorder, and I have a V-mount battery, and this thing can stay completely on and record for about eight hours. That's insane, right? So we've got 4K, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cruise through some of this, but it doesn't always have to be this complicated. It could be something simple, right? I used to be really proud about uh, you know, I'll just stick something under my arm, like a coat hanger or whatever, and that's where I started. It was very, very small, but th this is all you need. You need three points of contact on that camera to hold it still and steady. And if it's something big with a follow focus and a monitor, cool. If it's just you ripping from the barrel, catching focus, that's great, too. Um, but I, I highly suggest if you're going to use it for video, put it on a monopod, you know, find a shoulder rig or something to tuck in, get three points of con contact. Um, and the beautiful thing about the Z7, right, it, it has no mirror. So we have, in order to use our, our F-mounted lenses, we use the F to Z adapter, which is beautiful because in cinema, I prefer older looking glass, some vintage glass. I also love the brand new lenses, but they're very sharp. And sometimes if you're going for a different look and you want to use a vintage lens, the, the F to Z adapter lets me do that. So I have a 51.2 on here. Looks fantastic, right? And I get to use that with the Z7. Um, a beautiful thing about it is the Z7 has VR on it. So if, if my lens doesn't have VR, I can now put VR on my lens through the camera body to give me two stops of stabilization, right? Um, I'm going to show you the music video uh, that I'm going to show you at the end, but this is just a little preview. I want you to see some of the techniques we used, and then I'm going to start kind of showing you um, how, how we use all of those in the cinema setup. So here we go.
Okay, so I'm going to show you how we make that music video and the different techniques that we're using to get those looks. Um, but first, I want to jump to the, the, the new feature within the Z7 that makes it really outstanding for cinema is that you can color grade in-log footage. So there's now in-log. And what in-log is, it's a 10-bit output from the camera body into an external monitor. And why would you use in-log? Well, that's going to give you more dynamic range. So it's going to give you less contrast, but it's going to give you more stops within your highlights and your shadows so that you can, um, you know, if anything seems to be um, kind of blown out or you just, you're basically capturing the widest amount of highlights and shadows so that you can go back in and color footage and it doesn't um, degrade the footage. It's meant to be color graded. So this is my friend Ryan and I shot this in my basement and this is a this is kind of a common piece of footage that I would typically shoot for my job. She has a new song that she wants to perform and I just filmed her playing her new song. She puts that out on the internet to debut the new song. So if you're ever looking to get into filmmaking, you're like, where do I start? Go with musicians. Everybody's got a, you know, someone who's playing piano, guitar, or sings. They're probably the most available person that you can get to do some kind of action in camera. So I'm going to show you the, uh, the color grading. And it's going to go back and forth between the grading and the, and the coloring. So let's take a look. All right, so that's just a preview of a song, but I, I, I just, it was a test for myself. I wanted to see what I could get out of the color grading, and that's what I came up with. So let's go ahead and just look at some of the features that make this camera really great for cinema use. Again, I'm a photographer, so why the mirrorless? Why this camera system? Because I'm a photographer. One day I'm shooting photos, the other day I'm filming a band, you know? So I need a camera that can do both things. I, I can't carry around a big system that's going to do photo or, or just one thing because I've got to travel, I'm going light. They made the camera body even lighter. That's even better. So slow motion, as you may have seen it in that previous clip, is crisp and beautiful. Let's take a look. All right, start your spin. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. This is when filmmaking gets real fun. When you do simple stuff like that, create something really complex looking for a simple setup. I love that. Um, highlight display, you know, that's something that you're going to need on an a, in a cinema camera. When you're going out there, if you're doing documentary work, you need to make sure your highlights aren't blown out. It's just a basic feature that you need to have if you're going to do serious cinema. Nikon's got it. Focus peaking, this is massive, right? If you have the D850, it has focus peaking. Uh, in 1080, but this is 4K, and it does focus peaking in 4K. You can choose several different colors. Um, you can have three different levels of response, so it can make it larger or smaller, depending on how, how much you need to see it. I was shooting something two days ago. I'm filming a little guitar pedal, and it has super small text on it. I, I'm not going to be able to see if that's in focus or not, 
but the focus peaking, it just brought a red highlight around the text. I could see perfectly. There's no guesswork to it, right? So that's the time you need something like focus peaking. You got your headphone jack, you've got your mic. Um, now, I mentioned VR, it has two stops of VR. So let's say you have an old lens. Um, you can go two stops of VR, and now you can do three stops with the electronic VR. Um, so you've got five total stops. If you haven't tried it, go pick up a Z6 or a Z7 and just hold still. Goodbye to tripods for photojournalists, video, you know, wh wherever you're traveling, if you, if you can't carry a lot of gear, you can hold your breath for a little bit. All right, so if you're doing interviews and stuff like that, this camera is insane. It looks like it does not move at all. So you've got to try it out as soon as we're done here. New color profiles, which is really cool. Um, so instead of your just uh, monochrome, your standard, your vivid, they have a ton of different features that you can play with, and they look awesome. They're very fun to play with, so I, I highly suggest checking it out. And like we mentioned, the HDMI output 10-bit, this is massive. From 8-bit to 10-bit, we're talking thousands or, or um, I think thousands of more colors, maybe even millions. I'm not, I'm not terribly sure on the technical bit, but you're, you're talking about a lot more information. So this is a powerhouse camera for cinema, for video. This is serious. And especially if you're a photographer and you need that flexibility, got those clients that need you to do something color graded, but you got to go out the next day in a different city on the same flight. You just you need to have that flexibility. That's that's how I got to where I'm at as a filmmaker is because I could be flexible, and I I feel like that's part of the success that I've had is that I've been able to stay flexible, do photo, video, and Nikon has had something for me every step of the way. Their camera and the video features has grown as I've grown, and. I, I've just shot Nikon. Of course, you know some other clients may need something else, but this is this is what I use, and I love it. It's been perfect. So, I'm going to show you how we do some of the technical things. I'm going to take you on the set of making the music video with Emily Blue. So, uh, there's going to be three features: the autofocus we're going to point out, um, the stabilization. So let's just let's just check this out real quick. Okay, so we've been using the Nikon Z7 now for a few days on this production, and right off the bat, one of the most convenient things about this system is the battery has not changed from your D850, 750, put it right into the mirrorless. The same thing goes with the card. You can go ahead and use the same card, same battery, and you're ready to go. the camera? Uh, so we're going to use uh, autofocus on it, uh, like we were doing yesterday. Uh, yeah. I think the, uh, the, face, the face detection on it was pretty pristine. Yeah. So I don't even think we have to attach, uh, attach anything to it. I mean, yeah. it's like... It works really well yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, we have that follow focus, but we're just going to leave it behind for this show. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I want to say 90% of what we filmed was just autofocus. So the fact that you can put the camera in places you can't reach and still use autofocus, I think that's a huge game changer for this camera. On this particular setup, we wanted to do a zooming effect, so we're using the 70 to 200, and what's great is we can use our F-mounted lenses with the adapter onto our mirrorless camera. We have all of these lenses that we can still use, and it works seamlessly with the autofocus. We're actually using a servo to zoom in and out, and we're letting the camera do all of the focusing, and it's been working great, and it keeps it tack sharp. All right, so, so some things that we went over there. Same cards, same batteries. If you have a DA50, if you've been with Nikon for a while, you don't have to go and buy those new things. Autofocus, facial recognition, it's beautiful. It works very, very well. 
And the last thing was we were using an F-mounted lens. And instead of putting a follow focus servo on the focus, we put it on the zoom. And we let the camera do the focusing. And that's how we, pull, we pulled off those really cool 70 zooms, right? Um, I'm really excited to just show you this film. Um, I, I'm down to three minutes, so that's all we have left. Is I just want to show you the full uh, project. Just look at how crisp it is. Again, we shot to card, and there is no color correction on this video. It is so crisp, and the colors just pop. I love what we did here. Check it out. This is Emily Blue falling in love. That's the Nikon Z7, guys. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. We've got another presentation coming up, but I'm Chris Hirschman. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikon Ambassador Chris Hirschman. So as we've been doing all day long, we're gonna transition right into our next uh, presenter. Um, and it's an amazing program uh, with Amy Vitale. So we're gonna, we're gonna clear off to the side of the stage.
Amy Vitale will be up in three minutes right here at the Nikon Theater.